What is good, everybody? Today we are reviewing the Super 7 Ultimates Matt Cardona figure here. And you can see that this packaging is pretty similar to a lot of other Super 7 figures. It usually has a slip cover on it, but I'm enjoying the packaging and the artwork right here. I did pick this up from Big Bad Toy Store. And on the front, you do have the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast logo. Pretty cool stuff going on right here. You have the lightning bolts. You got sort of that Nasty Boys paint splatter deal going on. Lots of coloration. Pretty cool packaging. I enjoy it. I like it. And the Super 7 packaging always kind of blows me away with the, you know, the details and stuff but on this side plate it has the scratch that figure itch and on the opposite side it says the major wrestling figure podcast and also on this packaging when you flip it around this little belt goes all the way around the front and i think you could take it off i'm not going to take it off because once you take it off it's kind of difficult to get back on there but super seven logo you got the ultimates logo at the top but to reveal the figure you will remove the slip cover and underneath there we do have the figure itself which i picked this up because i thought it looked pretty damn good now I, i've been wanting to review this figure for a while now i think this one looks better than their first go around i never had the Matt Cardona from the first go around, so I'm happy to have this one here, but you have the front viewing window, you have the wrestling ring around the front, major wrestling figure podcast, Matt Cardona down here, always love this font right here, then you'll notice up here it says scratch that figure itch, nice coloration again, another Ultimates logo, and then on the back it says always ready, and then it has a short little bio read of Matt Cardona if you want to read it, you can pause it now, but that is pretty much our packaging for our Super 7's Ultimates, Matt Cardona, excited to pop this figure out of the packaging, put him on the rotating base, find out what it's all about, and see how he compares to the rest of our wrestling action figure. With that being said, Let's crack this guy out of the packaging, find out what he's all about. So here we have a look at Matt Cardona out of the packaging. Liking what I'm seeing here, man, I don't think the figure is perfect by any stretch, though. We're going to dive into my things that I don't like about the figure and the things that I do like about the figure. My thing with Super 7 is I have this love-hate relationship because I think that they do some really good things, but they also do some questionable things. And when you're looking at a price point like these figures come in at, you know, you're promised a... Uh, you know, it's a higher end. It's, it's sort of an import style figure. It's not supposed to be a retail quality figure. It's supposed to be something above that. You know, you're kind of paying that premium price point. So we're going to dive into all the things I like about it, get into the details in the weeds of it, man. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at Cardona's accessories, and then we'll take a closer look at Matt himself. So for Matt Cardona's accessories you get with the Super 7 Ultimate figure, you get a pretty decent amount, right? I think that you get enough here that suffices the figure. So the first accessory we're taking a look at is the championship belt that you get, which is the new modern version of the internet championship which looks pretty good i will say i wish it was a little bit bigger but i do like it now one thing you'll see is that my little things popped up right here man the little pegs that are on the belt right here i guess i was taking some photos of the figure and it snapped off you know i like to take the figure and pose it around play with it you know do some photography things like this before getting into the review so i got my thoughts real fleshed out as we go and so, uh, yeah, the pegs broke off right there. So be aware of that. I don't know why that took place. But I will say it was very challenging right out of the packaging to get this to class. So when you fold it around right here, I had a pretty difficult time getting it through there. It was it was actually quite frustrating trying to get it on there. But I do like the details, like the little Matt Cardona logo on the clip there with the gold. The, uh, the purple on the back of the strap is nice. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I imagine it is. But the title belt does look good. I like it. I think the shape of it's nice and everything like that. So that's good for the championship. I'm glad we at least get an internet championship or some championship with this figure just be careful with your pegs there another one of the big accessories is his entrance gear which i like a lot it's got the spike shoulder pads in here and it is like an entrance it's not a duster i'd say but it is an entrance gear and it has the matt cardona logo in the middle in green and white all of this paint splatter it's real nasty boys looking and it looks awesome like very colorful very toyetic and shoulders look good i like it i like this a lot the skull on the back right there with all the logos and then you can open it up in the front to get it on the figure and it's just it's very pliable it's not soft or anything but it's not super hard i like it it feels good in hand the sculpted shoulder pads here with the spikes are nice they're not too sharp i don't think you're gonna have any issues there they're a little bit of a pliable rubber material it looks like you could actually pull those out if you were you know if you were so inclined to pull those out you could but i like the entrance gear i don't think i'm gonna pose mine around with it but i still like that they included it and then another part of his entrance gear is the side gauntlets or the arm gauntlets which you do get one for each arm you have the little gauntlets here and they look good too i like the it seems that the colors match up all of the paint matches up nicely and it fits the figure well so that is always nice and dandy but the spikes look pretty good as well but one important thing about an action figure is going to be your head sculpts and we get three different interchangeable head sculpts and i think the likeness is pretty damn good they remind me of like an illustration they remind me a lot of an illustration or something the way that they're done and it's like a mix of realism and and 
comic book-esque is what I think of, but the hair looks good. I like the colors. The beard is nice. Always been jealous of this man's beard. So it has a really nice beard in there. The likeness is good. Pissed off head sculpt. It's probably my favorite head sculpt out of the three, but you get the pissed off head sculpt. Then you get the smiling head sculpt, which I think is good too. I will say that I think the eyes could have been a little bigger, but I still like it. You got the tongue out expression, which is good. So now he matches our macho man. But I like all three of them. I think all three of them are very good, except I like the pissed off one the most. I think, you know, it just, I don't know. It just suffices the best. I like that one. Pissed off Cardona. That's the good one. And the last bit of little entrance gear that you get is the sunglasses. And these are nice, except there's a sticker over them in the packaging. So when you remove them from that, you will get a little bit of sticky residue on the glasses. So just be careful and aware of that. But if you want to put these onto a head sculpt, you can just plop them on there. And they fit pretty damn good, I would say. I think these fit really well, especially compared to like a Mattel. I feel like Mattel sometimes don't, don't really go on there well. These look really good, man. I think the glasses turned out very nice. So you can put them on all three three of the head sculpts and there they are on the tongue out head sculpt and then here you have them on the pissed off head sculpt and then the last part of his accessories are his interchangeable hands which we have these fisted hands with the tape actually sculpted on which is painted nicely so you love to see that and I don't see any inconsistencies between paint and sculpt on these hands which is a nice bonus but he does come with fists to beat the hell out of people he comes with these mic holding slash weapon wielding style hands here which again he does have the hand tape on there which is good he comes with these reaching out grabby hands they, they remind me a lot of the Rey Mysterio hands that we get from, from Mattel. These look a little undersized or something. Though. There's something off about the shape, but they are reaching out and grabbing. And then you do get his Long Island signature hand. So you get the L on the right hand, and then you have the one on the left hand there. And correct me if I'm wrong, is he not holding something right there? Is that him holding something? What is that? And it appears that there's something sculpted in his hand right there, but I can't tell. You guys seeing that? I don't know if that's supposed to be something or if that's an error, but yeah, you do have the one hand, and then you have the L hand. And last but not least, probably my favorite interchangeable hand has to be the middle finger hand, which is is something I wish we could get from Mattel or Jazzwares, but he does have a middle finger post hand, which I like a lot. Gonna be definitely using this one in the thumbnail and on my display. I'm probably gonna display him like this. So that's good. Definitely a highlight of the figure. So getting into the head sculpt, starting out at the top of the head, we already took a look at it and it looks really good for, for my sake. Again, I think the eyes could be open a little more, but I like it. I think they did a good job here on this head sculpt. When you're switching out these head sculpts, I found that the one that comes on the packaging, the smiling one, is it goes on the easiest and then the other ones are kind of difficult to get on there all the way. So be careful not to snap the neck peg. So you can see like the head's kind of like bobbling a little bit once it gets all the way on. Not the biggest deal, just something to mention. But going down to the torso, I like this torso. I think, you know, Matt's a pretty jacked individual. I think they did a good job here of, of capturing his likeness and his body and this musculature and stuff. And I love the stomach and chest hair. It's a nice detail that people underrate. I think that can really add a lot of likeness and a lot of details to a figure there. You can even see the nipples showing through right there. So those are sculpted on. But I like the striations in the shoulders, the arms and everything. I do hate that they're single jointed but at least the articulation in the super seven specifically at least the single jointed elbow doesn't prevent a ton of articulation but i would certainly like to have a double jointed arm whenever possible we do have the gear in here which is very cool i think the skull logo looks good all the coloration and the paint looks very nice as well and the crotch piece is similar to a storm collectibles it's like a, a soft pliable rubber material so that it's not harsh on the plastic so you're not going to get that eating into the upper thigh and stuff like that another thing Thing. His wrist tape is sculpted on there as well, which I think works wonders here. And when you switch out the interchangeable hands a lot, I do tend to notice that they get a little loose, which isn't a huge deal, but it's certainly worth mentioning. So you do get that white wrist tape in there and everything like that. I did get a little schmutz on there, but it still it looks fine. All that's dandy. No thigh cut in here, and we'll get into the articulation in a moment, but the thighs look pretty good. The tone, like the whole entire skin tone looks pretty realistic and good. That's what I'm saying. It kind of looks like a comic book character mixed with some realism, which is it's odd about the figure. But I like the musculature, the sculpts and everything really stand out on the figure. The knee tape looks good, and the logos on the knee tape are very clean, as well as the knee pads. I mean, you're getting that same paint splatter pattern throughout. You get the purple on the back of the knee pads as well. One thing I don't like, which, you know what, well, let's wait. Let's wait until we get to the next segment. But you do have his tattoos shining through right here on his leg, which I think is cool. I think that is cool that he has a little bit of ink. You know, it's not on his upper body, but it's easy enough to hide if he wanted to, which is good. And then he does have his signature boots in here with the Matt Cardona logos, and you get that same paint splatter stuff going on. Even the straps on here look good as well. So getting a lot of details on this figure with Matt Cardona. Now getting into the articulation with this Matt Cardona, his head sculpt doesn't really pose that much because it's just a normal ball joint right here. There's no ball hinge. It's just a regular ball joint. So you're not going to get any real movement in terms of looking down or up. You don't even really get any tilting for real, but he can obviously look 360 and all those things if you want him to look to the left 
left or right. And here how tight that is. The ab crunch is, is formidable. He can go back and forward like this. I also noticed that my waist out of the packaging did not move. I had to take him and do like a real torque session there to get him to actually rotate. But you do get waist rotation there. He does have the full 360 here. Bicep swivel. The single jointed arms, while this is 2024, I think we should be beyond single jointed arms This by now. It's still, it's serviceable. Like I think if he was holding a mic or whatever, or a drink or a beverage, whatever, you could get it to his mouth. I don't think you'd have to have an issue there. And then as far as the, as far as the shoulders, he can go above 90, which is always something you love to see. Going down's easy. It feels really good in hand. I just wish that he had double jointed knees, which is probably my biggest gripe with the figure. That and then some other stuff. But toe kick forward is pretty good. It's almost 90. 90 degrees, I'd say. Can't really go back that much. Thigh rotation is non-existent as far as thigh cut, but you can rotate it at the joint right there if you wanted to do so. He does have a single jointed knee, which is not quite 90 degrees, which I think is very annoying. Like, you gotta have double jointed knees, man. That's just, that should be a standard for any action figure, especially a wrestling figure. But then the biggest crime on this figure is no boot cut, man. No boot cut, but you get the knee swivel, which I guess is okay, but I, like, a knee swivel's fine but I think that a boot cut would be much better and so yeah I think that's a yeah I, I really would like to see some sort of boot cut but let's get into some figure comparisons but before we get into some figure comparisons I want to show you a little bit of stuff that you can actually do with this figure if you wanted to fix him up using some other accessories so we do have the GCW championship from the bell to bell ringside exclusive Nick Gage and Matt Cardona two pack and you could put this with this figure it is a little bit oversized but that's something that you could do if you wanted to do so so you could put the GCW championship championship on there and if you have the legends of the territory pack you can put the nwa on this championship on this figure as well so if you had the nwa championship there's a an option for you as well you can put that on there that looks really good i think and then even if you have the classic internet championship from the old elite mattel zack Ryder, you could even put this on here if you wanted to you know pose that guy around there and that looks really good as well so just some different title display options and then some other things that i think would look good on the figure were some different cloth goods items so my Dolph Ziggler vest that I made him out of denim using the Orange Cassidy shirt. This looks really good on the figure, I think. And if you plop that collar down right there, I think that's an option. If you want to use that, I think that looks pretty damn good if you wanted to put that onto the mat. Another cool option would be the flannel from the Beast Incarnate 3-pack with Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Brock Lesnar. You could put that on there, which I think looks sick as hell, too. So that may be something that you want to do. So there's another little, I don't know, flannel vest to use. And last but not least, here's the Bell to Bell Deathmatch shirt with the, you know, the the Long Island with the middle finger there for the Deathmatch King. You do have that shirt, which looks really good on this figure too. So if you want to use that option, you can. But now that we've looked at these cloth goods options and championship options, let's take a look at some Matt Cardona figure comparisons. So for your Matt Cardona figure comparisons, we have a couple Zack Riders right here. We have the first ever Mattel Elite Zack Rider in Elite Series 8, and then we have the last ever Elite Zack Rider, which was the Elite 59. I did put a custom head sculpt on there using the original, I think, Elite 17 head sculpt, I think it was. I can't remember off the top of the dome, but these look pretty cool, and they scale for the most part pretty well. I think you could get away with mingling this in with your AEW figure collection or your Mattel figure collection if that's something you wanted to do but another figure comparison we got to do is we have the elite 108 chelsea green and the elite 64 kurt hawkins that is the chase over there but these still look pretty good at make switch i mean again he's gonna like he doesn't necessarily fit in well with the mattels you can see there it's just i think it's going to depend on the context and what figures like these two look like they could go together well but these two don't necessarily look like they could go together well if that makes sense but this is cool to see these all together here in the review for the super 7 ultimates matt cardona figure review but I think that about wraps up our Super 7 Ultimates Matt Cardona action figure review. I really do like a lot of the things going on with this figure, but at the same time, there are some things that bother me about the figure. The thing with Super 7s and the thing about their ultimate wrestling figures, I just don't think at the price point that they charge, I think single jointed arms and single jointed knees is unacceptable. I don't really care about the accessories portion if you don't have at least a double jointed elbow or a double jointed knee. Double jointed knee has to be a thing, I feel like, especially in the wrestling figure space. At least that's my opinion in the matter. But yeah, the single jointed arms and knees is a huge no-no for me personally. I just do not care for that. I 
think that, you know, you want to be able to post these guys around. It's, it makes them very, very limited when you give them single jointed arms and legs. Another thing is no boot or shin cut. Hell, on top of that, he doesn't even have a thigh cut. So, you know, those things are also very worrying to me. Not worrying, but the thing is, though, just because he doesn't have thigh cut doesn't mean that you can't rotate the leg. You can rotate the leg because it is on that ball joint. So you can rotate the leg. I just wish that you could rotate the boot and shin as well. The thigh cut doesn't bother me as much as the no boot cut. No boot cut in the year 2024 is just absurd to me. But I do like some of the details. I think the details are crazy. Like the chest hair looks really good. I like the wrist tape and the way it looks. I think it's painted well. The lightness on the head sculpt is good enough, I think, for this. And again, it just kind of gives me, you know, it's not as, it has realistic elements, but I think the thing is, is it kind of looks like an illustration, like a realistic illustration. And I think it is a cool piece, especially if you're a major wrestling figure podcast fan or you're a Matt Cardona fan himself. I think that the gear looks awesome. It's very toyetic. I like the logos on the knee tape and, and things like this. I think there are a lot of awesome details. I did throw on the shirt from the Bell to Bell series and put the GCW championship on there. While that GCW title is a little big, it still looks pretty good. I think it does look cool. I, all those different things, you know, you can put a myriad of different championships on this guy. Again, I like the details and everything. I just think for this price point, I would really like to see more articulation out of it. And then some of the interchangeable head sculpts were difficult to get on. But it is a quality figure. It's definitely a quality figure. Like I said, the details are probably what I like the most about it. But he was pretty fun to shoot, even though that articulation is limited. And he scales pretty damn good with elites. He may be a little bit... He doesn't scale perfectly with elites, but I think you can make some different things work if you wanted to, mingling him in with your collection. But at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun with the figure and... Those are just my different gripes and things about it. But at the end of the day, would I buy this if I were you? I think it's tough. But if you guys have this figure, I am interested to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I think the most impressive thing about this figure is those details, the entrance gear, the gauntlets, and things like this. But anyways, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the review. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know what you think of this figure down in the comment section below. But before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Appreciate all you fellas over there. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your continued support as always. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok on My Damn Toys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.